Welcome back, everyone. Nearly 2 billion Muslims across the world celebrate Eid this month. Sharing her family traditions and how she celebrates Eid is Sarah Jaman Yassin. <laughs> she brought the party to us. Brought the party here. You look stunning. Thank you very much. Oh my, can you give us a little twirl? Like, come on. Come through. This is, it's, it's a special moment, a special time for you and your family. Please explain to us what Eid is, uh, and then we'll get into how you celebrate. So Eid really means festivity or feast. Yes. So this is the feast after 30 days of fasting for the month of Ramadan. Okay. So, so mm -hmm, yes, I was going to say, this is, how does it usually unfold, uh, Eid celebrations? So for us in our house, and most Muslims around the world, we go to Eid prayers on Eid morning, mm -hmm. and we dress to the nines like this. Yes. So for me, it's finding the outfit, the matching hijab, the accessories, uh -huh. and then throughout the day, we go visit family, we host other family members, and it's really just a time to celebrate, reflect on the month of why we fasted, and then progress into the future with how all the teachings we've learned. So right. to commem commemorate yes. all the fanciness, I brought you a very fancy Eid outfit. Oh, why, thank you. Don't <laughs> mind if I do. So you're looking for something that's just going to mark the occasion in a beautiful way, right? Yeah, so Eid outfits, very. Yes. This is, oh, this is very nice. Lovely. So Eid outfits, very across the world from region yeah. to region. So in here we're wearing like Turkish outfits. Okay. But in the Middle East they wear abayas, kaftans in Southeast Asia. Yeah. They could wear saris and langas. The real common element is that most outfits are modest. Right. Okay. Yes. So we're covered up and gorgeous. Yes, that's right. Correct. Beautiful. So you get into your finest. You go to mosque. You celebrate together. Did, is this a day off work and school? It is a day off of work and school. Yes. Beautiful. Love to see it. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the decor. Yes. So what, the biggest change I've seen over the years is that like you can buy now Eid specific decor. Yes. Which is lovely. You can put it around your house and really celebrate uh, to mark the occasion. So what have you brought for us here? So absolutely. So growing up, we did not have. Have e decor. Right. So we used to buy Christmas decorations, repurpose it, make our own. Yeah. So it's wonderful to see products like these in the stores. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with inflatable because these are my favorite. Here we have inflatable lanterns. Oh, that's so There's sweet. There's also inflatables for outdoors for your lawns. Okay. Eden Mubarak signs. There's a Canadian company called New Traditions, and they're doing oh, wow. fabulous work with really really great inflatables yeah indoors we have lots of different lanterns we have eat signs yeah uh, we have signs for your door we so have these are just stunning. gorgeous look at gorgeous. these so you can hang these up inside outside that's really beautiful um, and then we yeah. even have disposable plates look at these with eat we have napkins yeah, we have mosques nice. So it's Gorgeous. just really, really a huge range of things that you can find in stores now. And it's a great thing that you can just pick it up in stores. I think that's lovely. Okay, so we've talked a bit about the decor. Uh, we've talked about the outfits as well. I want to talk about the food. Yes. Because this has been 30, 30 days of fasting. Yes. Um, it's nice that you can get together, and I imagine there is a lot of food involved. There is a lot of food, yeah. but, you know, we try not to make it, like, overkill. Yep. Because this 30 months is really about training yourself, having empathy for the poor. Days. And people who don't have food. Right. So really when you're celebrating, and especially I think this year, there's so many people around the world that mm. are needy and without food. I know in my family we're trying to, like, just have it more modest. Have a more modest celebration, more modest food. You don't want to overkill. Yes. But in my household, Eid mornings always have a specific smell. Okay. So as you know, I have Guyanese heritage. Yes. So it has that Guyanese element. Mm -hmm. So on Eid mornings, I wake up to my mom having the spices in the house. Yes. So traditionally, Guyanese people have so wine, or it's also called vermicelli. Okay. And it is a vermicelli noodles that it is cooked. Is that this one? It's this one right here. That nice. is cooked in sweet milk. I'm just going to show you what and that looks spices. like. And with spices. Yeah. And this is eaten as a porridge on Eid morning. Okay. And then if you don't like it as the porridge form, it also comes in the cake form. And this is traditional I will take food. the cake, thank you very much. <laughs> so that's so, because it's really, you like, it's dense. It is dense. Mm. It is dense. And I'm so into yummy. a dense cake. I like that. Okay, and is there any significance to the maraschino cherries? Because I see them everywhere. I just really like them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's really the significance. But I like people, to eat them. Yes, that's me. <laughs> yeah. But people have raisins, they have nuts. Okay. I just really like the cherries, and I think they look good on TV. Oh, they look fantastic. So, yeah. Okay, so we have these. What else do we have? Okay, so for lunch, 
Uh, the Guyanese traditional food is palau. Mm -hmm. So my mom actually made the palau. And what's in the palau? So it is a rice and meat dish made with aniseed, cardamom, and it's all boiled together. Okay, delicious. What else do you have? And then for dessert, mm -hmm. we have traditional Guyanese matai, yes. which is the Guyanese version of a Canadian Timbit. Nice. But a lot richer. It has more butter, uh -huh. and it is fried, and then it is sugared on the outside. It's really delicious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, Tracy, I made this Guyanese halwa. Yes. And what Guyanese halwa is, it's that it's flour, sugar, milk, eggs, and it's cooked on the stovetop okay. until it forms a cookie dough type of consistency. Okay. And then this is what it is. Again, the cherries are me. Yeah. People eat it with raisins and nuts. Lovely. So your mom made some, and let's give the husband props. The husband Which one made did he the, make? The husband made the swine. Okay, both of them. Yes. <laughs> Love to see it. You gotta give the dudes their props. I know you probably do the lion's share, but it's <laughs> nice that he's done some as well. So if, if you were to walk us through uh, a day of Eid, what mm -hmm. would it look like for you and your family? So How many it, kids do you have? I have two kids. I two have two kids. boys. Yes. So we really try to make Eid a celebration yeah. for them. We have gifts. We also do a gift exchange between my nieces and nephews. Nice. So we start off Eid night the night before. Uh -huh. We do a gift exchange. We usually have our last iftar together, yeah. bring in Eid together. Then Eid morning, we have Eid breakfast, go to prayers. And then we have a big family lunch and visit other family members and just really try to learn from those lessons from Ramadan. I like the thoughtfulness of it because I find that, you know, my family, they, they are now in the middle of Lent and that's 40 days. Mm -hmm. but. It's not just about giving up the thing. It's about what is the idea behind this? Yes. Why are we making the sacrifice? Yes. And I think that it's important that these conversations happen. So thank, thank you for bringing this into You're the studio. You're welcome. My so pleasure. Nice. Gorgeous.